Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Liberating Generations podcast. I'm Reagan Claire, and this is my beautiful mother, Dr. Keisha Ewers. Hi, Mom. Hi, Reagan. It's so good to see you today. You too. Oh, and you're joining us in the middle of finals week at school. Yes. Yeah, we're holding it together. <laughs> Actually, you're doing better than that. I got a text from her this morning that said I aced another final and I sent back a meme that said, this girl is on fire. <laughs> right? She's you on did. fire, everybody. Oh, thanks, mom. Thank you. Which actually we're going to talk about in this podcast. Yeah. So would you like to tell our listeners what we're talking about today? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> when we chat about what liberating generations means, you know, it's it's about really breaking. I think of it as the karma imprint of causes and conditions that have come together to form a certain experience and then our response or reaction to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's said that however we respond when we're children, we'll keep doing that forever unless we come back and re-examine the way that we react versus respond so we can react with skillful means rather than reacting from a child space. But until we actually do that work, then mm -hmm. we're going to have these self-generating patterns that I think of as fractals. Right. So like we can categorize those. And I, it's so fascinating because, you know, this isn't just about trauma, but when, you know, liberating generations for us, when we talked about it, it was freeing the family and tribe community from the self-generating unconscious and subconscious patterns, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't want to keep perpetuating unskillful ways of being in the world. Right. So it's not that, you know, sometimes when we're kids, we think if we can just control everything outside of us, we'll be okay. Right. Just manage how people see us, what they think about us, <laughs> we'll be okay. And that's a lot of energy put out into the world trying to, I think about it like moving the deck chairs on the Titanic as it's going down. You know, it's just like, it's, it's a futile waste of energy. Mm -hmm. Instead of coming inward, it, uh, in Buddhist thought, it said that there's not really any difference between samsara, which is the perpetuation, the cycle of birth and rebirth, whether that is literal in reincarnated life or if it's between breaths, from one breath to the next, from one activity to the next. So samsara comes with suffering in it, as well as joy and happiness and, you know, all kinds of beautiful things, but also suffering. And then nirvana, which is liberation from that. And so it's said that there's no difference between those two. It's just which way your awareness is pointing. Mm -hmm. Your awareness is pointing out. That's samsara. If it's right. pointing in, that's nirvana. Mm. I love that. That's beautiful. So that's our call to action today. Mm -hmm. We're going to point our awareness in and examine some of our energy patterns. How does that sound? That sounds perfect. Okay. Sounds perfect. And it has right. so much to do with what you're in school for. So for those of you that don't know, Reagan Claire is in uh, chiropractic college right now, learning to be a doctor of chiropractic medicine. Mm -hmm. And so these energy patterns, when we're small, and I want to say, it, kind of like our Enneagram podcasts, we did two episodes on the Enneagram. This is very similar in, in that your Enneatype doesn't emerge from just what your parents reinforced. It's also mm -hmm. part of your karma, your mm -hmm. astrological patterning, your human design, your culture, the imprints mm -hmm. of your experiences, right? Your genetics, mm -hmm. all of that, all in one. So are your energy patterns. 
So it's not just from trauma, but trauma, this is where, you know, uh, it's called the near enemy to truth, where right now trauma is a big word Mm -hmm. and a buzzword that a lot of people are talking about. And the problem, the beauty of that is, oh, it's getting addressed. Right. The problem, the near enemy to truth is that People are focusing now on the story of the trauma as, oh, if I just heal that trauma, then everything else goes away. But that's not true. Right. Right. (laughs) Because there are energy patterns set up in your body that are part of that conditioning. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring awareness to the whole kit and caboodle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of different thinkers have talked about their, about these energy patterns. I'm, you know, I, I'm a big fan of setting them up in the five element system because that is, you know, it pervades into Chinese medicine, into Ayurvedic medicine, which is well, where traditional Chinese medicine came from. It's in Tibetan Buddhism. It's, it's in shamanism, druidry, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. Native cultures, you know, that have been connected to the earth worldwide have some way of using the elements because mm-hmm. we are made of all five elements. And so it's a really nice way of thinking about these. So we'll think about them in those those five elemental spheres, air, water, earth, fire, and space. Okay. And each of those elements has a different body type. And so there are other terms for these uh, that other thinkers have thought about. And so I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll bring in the enneotypes that go with them loosely. And then we'll also talk about like Reikian psychology, Jungian psychology, Freudian even. Uh, Stephen Kessler wrote a book called The Five Personality Patterns that talks about these uh, Stephen Johnson talked about the the character styles. We talk about internal family systems, Schwartz. These are all, this is all part of that examination of the energy patterns of each individual person. Okay. Yeah. So the first one we're going to call out and point to is air. And uh, this is yours. Yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I have a big healthy dose of this one too. Yes. Yeah. So this body type is uh, thinner and it, the energy is leaving. So when things get stressful, it's like, bye. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Mm-hmm. And that could be just going internal it could be getting in front of netflix it could be eating mindlessly you know a lot of different things that can happen but it's definitely not staying with the discomfort it's like Mm -hmm. disassociation right Mm -hmm. so uh the freudian term for this is schizoid Mm -hmm. so uh it's also called the creative um Sometimes the enneotypes fives and sevens can fall into this as a sort of general rule. Uh, it's the air element, the angelic realm, the fairy and elven realms. It's very, very creative because this is where the, you know, like when, when I was 10 and uh, my vice principal was sexually abusing me, I would get home and I would go out on the little deck in our complex and I would sit under a palm tree and I would visit with angels. And I was like, this earth sucks. Yeah. And I go find some, some other species, some other non-human intelligences maybe, you know, and they're available, like they're all around. And so I started chatting with them when I started realizing I I couldn't really trust humans in my sphere at that age group, you know, at that age where I was. And, you know, that was legitimate. So it's when you have big capital T trauma, it's much easier to leave your body than to stay put with the suffering that's happening. And so big PTSD, there's a dissociative pattern that'll happen, this leaving pattern. 
And so that's really good. It's like, yeah, this is, you know, your gift becomes it. You know that there are other places that you can go with your consciousness and your energy. And you know that if it's not safe, you can leave. And of course, the shadow side of that is leaving every time you feel uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yourself can be left kind of fragmented. And that's where you think safety lies is just leaving. So uh, there's a lot of defensive guarding that can happen from that. There's, there's an inability to anchor and be grounded and coalesce all of your parts. You shatter easily. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the, one of the body signs is being jumpy, you know, and you know me, <laughs> and I know you have the same thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And another one is a twist in the body, right? How many times have you and I both been told we have a rib out or yeah. a higher than the other or a, a rotation that doesn't belong there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after visiting with all of the, the non-human realm and finding that that's a fun place to play, mm -hmm. you know, in these other realms, then sometimes the fear becomes living as a human, living mm -hmm. in the human body as an individual, feeling mm -hmm. like even you might be, because you orient toward the psychic realm, mm -hmm. that sometimes you feel like you might be going crazy, mm -hmm. right? And there can be a... a psychological defense of escapism withdrawal going into fantasy magical thinking yeah it can also be a lot of times where eating disorders develop addiction develops being uncomfortable inside of your own body yeah not feeling like you're supposed to be in this body yep or in this life right mm -hmm. Besides, yeah, it's hard. I'm not supposed to be here. I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. Suicidal ideation starts happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes not even in connection with your body. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of anxiety emerges out of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't matter. No one cares. Freezing mm -hmm. patterns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're in that constant state of sympathetic shock. I mean, no wonder... The tendency is for your body to be all twisted. In chiropractic, the air type body, yeah, it, they're very prone to <clears throat> having misalignments. And it's really interesting because within chiropractic, there are different ways of actually adjusting the different energy fields. Mm -hmm. So for air people, you just need a very light touch. You need to, you need a light touch and you need to get in and get out because it's almost it's almost like I'll feel like it's invasive and intrusive, if not, right? Yeah. You have to kind of surprise them, get in, get out, and then just let their nervous system do its thing. Mm -hmm. Let innate take over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's air. In Ayurveda, this would be the Vata type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the, the next, and we'll do a little quiz, everyone, so that you can mm -hmm. kind of like figure out your, and then we have more than one energy pattern. In fact, you could sort of think of there's one, it's kind of like the Enneagram again, where there's one you operate from on a day-to-day -day basis, but you have a couple more in your back pockets that you pull. If that one didn't work, then here's another one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That one didn't work. So here's another one. We usually have uh, three, you know, and that we can rotate between depending on if, we're upset in crisis. If the usual pattern didn't work, you know, here's, here's what we do next. So and we're very adaptable people, right? And the goal is to eventually not go to one. The goal is to have a really concise, fluid uh, movement through all of the elements where it's not this polarity anymore. Instead, it's this really beautiful integrated system. Well, and it, you can move to just one if mm -hmm. that's what's required. And it's the ability to really feel the elements and say, oh, I have a lot of earth right now. Mm -hmm. Feels like putting a little air and a little bit of fire because I'm not motivated would be just the thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and so it's not, it's not living in the shadow of right. one, right? So we talked about dissociative with air. 
So it's it's recognition that, oh, so in order to uh, bring my fragmented parts together and coalesce, I have to have a strong sense of self, individuate, mm -hmm. and be able to ground in my body and feel at home in my body. And then I can start playing with the rest of what we're talking about. And so this is a process. And this is where somatic meets psychology meets spiritual meets energetic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's bringing the wholeness of it. So water, that would be like the Enneotype 2. And the body type is more... Uh, more what my body used to look like. And I was very watery when I was raising you kids. It was more Vata and then wound up with a lot of this water as a mom, which is interesting mm -hmm. now as I say that, why? Like, oh, it's that compassionate nurturing, right? Mm -hmm. And so there are bigger hips, um, bigger breasts. Uh, the the shoulders can can curl, you know, cave just a little bit, uh, larger, larger hips, you know, it's, it's a, it's a earth mother form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one in Freudian psychology was called the oral, um, type energy type. And it's also called the lover. It can be, um, there will be a polarity sometimes between dependent and self-reliant, you know, so kind of a codependent thing can emerge. Uh, the You can think about mermaids and mermen and water spirits as being a part of this one. And merging mm -hmm. is the name that uh, Kessler gives that is wanting to merge. So instead of leaving under crisis, this one, like a good Enneotype 2 or 9, will want to connect, want to merge. You know, their gifts are that they're caring and nurturing and uh, loving. And at the, you know, they have difficulty with receiving and holding and digesting. Mm -hmm. and, right? And they they feel like they have to take care of everyone else. But then they look to others to fill their needs. Mm -hmm. So there's a compensated merger that's super independent. That was definitely me. It's like, I don't need anything. Yeah. I can still fall into that category. Right. Would you say that maybe? Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the work still continues. The work still continues. Yeah, so. everybody, she's not perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the fear is, is that, uh, of abandonment and rejection and not enough or deprivation. And so the orientation is to connection of the other's needs, right? The compensated merger projects needs and identifies as a giver. Right. Yeah. So need causes abandonment would be the illusion. So it's like, don't want to be abandoned, so, so guard. Right. And um, the default emotion where the air uh, element is, the default emotion is anxiety, or the merger, the water person is shame. Mm. Yeah, and their shame reaction, instead of fleeing, like the air will flee, the water will collapse. Right, and you can kind of tie this into attachment styles where- yes. Air is very avoidant, and then water is very anxiously attached. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the false belief, you know, of the air is I don't exist. And the false belief of the water is love will solve everything. Right. I just have the perfect love if I just have that. Yeah. 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 And so they can be uh, dramatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah reference others instead of themselves mm -hmm. uh, i'm not enough i'll help you and of course like with the enneotype two their giving is manipulative right i see a lot of uh a lot of people saying i'm just an empath that's that's yeah. often that's oftentimes uh 
a sentence you'll hear with watery people. I'm just an empath. I feel everyone and everything. And that's a really beautiful gift, but it's the setting of boundaries within that as well, not merging into how the other person's feeling, instead being able to ground within your own self. Yes. And then be able to actually be of service. Yes. And to know that it's not you serving, it's you as a channel because the the water type, their, their human need is to nurture self, to know enough is enough, but their spiritual need is to know that that divine source is within them. Right. Like it's infinite. And so their battery comes from within, not from externalized actions or people or even nature. Yeah, so you find your core and you reference it from there, whereas the air is to get embodied, feel at home, re-enter, reassemble yourself. The water is to find that core and reference it. It's not, it's not meant to be reflected approval from outside or worse that comes from being of service. Right. Yeah. Beautifully said. Yeah. So then the third is earth. And uh, this body type will be m- more like a kappa. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's, it's like a, I don't know, like you introduced me to uh, uh, airbenders and firebenders and Avatar, uh, the last airbender. Avatar, the last airbender. And so uh, this is the earthbender, right? It's the, that sturdy, that girl that had that sturdy, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I love that show because it just takes all these elements. <laughs> and then in Frozen, it's the little troll people, right? Mm-hmm. The stones that that roll and turn into people, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's Earth. So this is enduring. Uh, the the um, Kessler calls it enduring energy type and. Uh, Freud called it the masochistic uh, mm. masochist. So this is any a type four and sometimes six. Uh, gnomes and dwarves would be, you know, like the the magical cool. beings, right? Mm-hmm. Their gifts are they're grounded and have really good stamina. So people that are air people love earth people because it's like. Oh, I can feel grounded around you. It's like grounded energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're steady. They're patient. They're diplomatic. I just have, I just have my dog, Sam. He's, yeah. he's very earthy and he, yeah. he's a big dog. And I have him get on top of me at any time. I feel like I'm floating away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the earth pattern shadow is, with fears of self-expression and accent. So hiding self. And then also this one does not like to be pushed. So if they even sense another type is trying to push them, they'll like dig in. You're not moving a nurse type. They're really, really stubborn. (laughs) So they resist everybody. Like they resist other people. They resist life sometimes. Um, they turn their will against their own selves because they'll resist parts of themselves mm-hmm. and they'll pull in and hide deep inside. So, um, you know, earth people are sometimes hard to know because of that. They resist everything um, and they sabotage their own forward movement to growth sometimes because they just go to ground in crisis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So their doubt is that they have a right to autonomy and mm. they fear intrusive, like invasive people. <laughs> they don't want anyone in their space. <laughs> so their references, you know, like the air type, their their sense of references to the mind, the water type to the other and to the earth part person, it's their reference is resistance. So you know, hiding, self-negation, self-sabotage, passive aggression. And then they'll they their illusion is, I'm just trying to please you. But really what they want is private space, you know. 
the air person wants safety. The water person wants relationship and wants to be needed and love. And then the earth person wants private space that nobody else gets to access. And so their default emotion where air is fear, water is shame, earth is resentment and sometimes guilt because, you know, of course, those activities can hurt other people. So their, their sort of my mental chatter is, I don't deserve and leave me alone. Yeah. And their faults believe is, I can't win. Life is hard. I just have to endure it. They'll stay in relationships for way long past the expiration date, you know, because endurance is the thing. And you can't make me, right? You can't make me. And they'll feel stuck and heavy in their energy system and hunkered down. So that's an interesting one on a chiropractic table, isn't it? Yeah, that one requires a lot of force. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Requires all of your power to get through an earth body system. Yeah, you're not allowed in. Mm -hmm. That'd be tough, right? It's also, yeah, it's definitely a dance of gaining that trust. You You can't just get someone on your table and go straight to the adjustment. Instead, you actually have to feed into the system, say hello, get to know it. And then with all of your power, that's that's when you deliver a force. It's, yeah, they're, they're hard ones to adjust. <laughs> they need to permission that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have two more energy patterns, uh, fire. I think we'll do a, a second episode on this. Mm -hmm. uh, to be continued deepening and we'll do the healing practices for each one beautiful I think yeah. that's great so fire kessler calls this the aggression one uh this is also according to freud psychopath would be the shadow they're the challenger defender their any type is eight and three mm -hmm. they're like the warrior you know uh their bodies are warrior and they're magic is dragon like dragon fire right mm -hmm. so they have big energy a big charismatic will mm -hmm. in, in the world and their energy whereas the earth is coming in and down you know water is going toward and bringing back it's like trying to mm -hmm. cycle and merge air is leaving fire is going like yeah yeah. So this one is the typical military, you know, strong, competent, resourceful, contained. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and really they seek safety through power and that power can be dysfunctional <laughs> mm -hmm. or, or it can be skillful, right. And responsible. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll reject their needs. I don't need anything. They idealize power they can dominate and control others in their shadow. Mm. They feel like they have to guard self. They don't, they can't need another person. They can't trust. They can't mm -hmm. ask for help. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. They tend to be very attractive because, you know, like females and males can have this, um, but they move through the world in a way that is very charismatic and can be seductive because, oh, wow, this person has kind of figured out life, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that's not necessarily true. It's just that on the outside, that's the mask that gets portrayed and it's how their bodies form themselves. Mm -hmm. So they orient to uh, truth and their illusion is, uh, <laughs> it's all a matter of willpower. If you just think it, you can do it. So you'll see like, Tony Robinson is fire, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's mindset, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's a lot of power in that. And it's very charismatic. Their default emotion is anger. Mm -hmm. Their mind chatter is, I, I will, I can do it. Let's go. You know? Yeah. yeah. And their shame reaction is that they're going to become angry. Anger is going to be their default. You know, mm -hmm. their false belief is abuse is normal. There's nobody to protect me. 
Mm -hmm. uh, their, their sort of diagnostic statement of other people is, I knew I couldn't trust you. I can handle this, right? And so there can be some rebellion. There's a big will to survive. Their, their pattern is powerful, confident, superior. So, of course, like, that's also hard to get to know, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their spiritual need is to feel held by a bigger, more powerful, loving presence that they can surrender open and relax into, to trust that. So that's their spiritual um, growth edge. And then grounding, allowing something good mm -hmm. and bigger than you to contain you, you know, is a big one. Mm -hmm. What would an example of that be? So it, it's, uh, well, so let's come back to Tony Robinson, uh, you know, talking about you can do this mindset and uh, actually Joe Dispenza too, mm -hmm. you know, like the universe has us, we're held by that. Right. Right. So it's not just coming from your own energy which can be thought of as like a tiny little bucket instead mm -hmm. it's the infinite source of all that holds us yeah yeah so uh oftentimes in trauma healing retreats and with plant medicine when i'm working with someone that's a warrior type fire i'm helping them access their child self and mm -hmm. start to learn how to be kind to that one because that one often got bullied at yeah. some point by a parent or somebody in school and they mm -hmm. decided like being powerless is not okay under any circumstances i will never again be in this position right and so then crying is a weakness and so i get them so that they can be comfortable with their emotions and not judge them as weak so right. yeah um it's I feel like in those circles, it's pretty rare to see a fiery system in in those settings, just because, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like our society actually encourages that type of mentality. It encourages fiery systems because it's production oriented. It's get it done, um, power, drive, yeah. leadership, and uh the mindset is being able to break down, breaking those walls down is actually a sign of weakness. And a lot of fiery people that I know um, have a lot of fear around that, like what's behind letting those walls down. I don't even want to see what's behind that door. Mm -hmm. So I have a fair amount of, of males that are my age or a little bit older with this system who have realized like it's just burned them out from the inside out and we have a few in our community that are you yeah. know really great examples of letting that soften and open yeah that is, that's something that i i think is one of my missions in this lifetime is to bring that type of that accessibility to men who are, are more around my age so that they don't have to get to that point of burning out so that instead they can get in touch with their divine feminine side where it's not all of this hyper-masculine. There's not that polarization. And instead the two are just dancing together. And, oh gosh, that's, Well, yeah. I'll tell you, there's a white fire and a red fire and the white fire is masculine and it's the, it's Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's power that is calm, stable, not mm -hmm. strong, not weak. It just is. Mm -hmm. And so it's like Christ's energy of compassionate love that is so powerful. And it's that's a really great archetype for that one. And then the red fire is feminine. And it's women who have this getting in touch with their own sensuality. So it's it, the archetype is a dakini. So that, that red dancing, sensual, right? And where we are supposed to have both of them in yes. alignment within us. 
And so the Christ consciousness, the the Dakini, and having that, you know, and being able to access each type of fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really, it's really beautiful. Fire energy is beautiful. And it's, you know, it can burn you up if it's not, if you don't have awareness of how you're mm-hmm. using it. Yeah. Learning how to harness fire energy is one of the most powerful things you can yeah. do. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've seen you work firsthand with people in circle and it's just absolutely incredible to witness. Um, when is your next medicine circle? Well, uh, next week, but it's full. And then we have one October uh, 28th, I think. Um, okay. Yeah, 28th. Yeah, they're every month. So usually around the third or fourth Saturday, but it's so, it's so beautiful. So we have one more before we run out of time. And that's the space, right? We have our death space. And each of these uh, elements also has a, in Buddhism, has a Buddha family attached to it. And so when we come back and do the, our second episode on this, we can bring some of that healing energy and practices from there to each of these types too. And space would be, uh, Kessler calls it the rigid uh, type, uh, hysteric, achiever, uh, industrious, the Enneatype one. Mm-hmm. And then magically would be wizards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is a, the energy goes up to head and out mouth, right? So mm-hmm. this is this is the one that if held really rigidly, um, it's hard. I, I had someone in a trauma healing retreat last weekend that was this. And the story of trauma gets rigidly held onto. Mm-hmm. It's rigidly held in the nervous system. It's rigidly held in the thought patterns. And there's a lot of autom- automatic negative thought looping, ruminating, perseverating on where people have done them wrong or where they have done wrong, you know, so, so right and wrong is a big thing. They're, you know, their positive aspects are that they're highly functional, good achievers, but they have difficulty with perfectionism and being rule bound and sharing their own inner experience and losing control. And so sometimes even in plant medicine journeys, this one have a, has a hard time surrendering, opening and relaxing because everything is about correcting and containing, mm-hmm. not opening and letting the chaos. <laughs> and so they, they, they have a hard time trusting their own inner guidance. If they've been hurt before, it's like, oh, I should have, I should have been able to see that coming, you know? So then they feel like they have, they have to control experience, control everyone else, control everything. And it's referencing rules instead of their own intuition because they feel like they can't trust that. So mm. there's a lot of intellectualization. It's about performance. I am my performance, right? Mm-hmm. Rule, fact, competence. And then their default emotion is criticism, blame, and also resentment. The shoulds right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's wrong, blaming self and others. Someone's always to blame, whether it's self or something else. Right. Yeah. So it's, 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 this rigidity will come out in the body as rigidly held body. But then of course, you know, your nervous system can't, can't hold all of that all the time. And so each one of these will have a shadow health issue too that we can talk about in our second episode of this. So I want to do the little quiz to end this and then we'll do in our in our next episode about energy patterns, we'll do healing practices. Perfect. So if you're in a place where you're not driving, we're operating heavy machinery, <laughs> you can close your eyes. If not, wait. <laughs> And what you're going to do is I'll read some questions and, and you're going to answer from when you're distressed or you're overwhelmed, what do you do first? And then what do you do next? Because remember, we have more than one energy pattern. So this will kind of help, right? What do you do first? And then what do you do next? So there are five questions. They represent each of the five uh, elements. 
So when you're distressed or overwhelmed, do you want to leave? Does your attention and energy move away from whatever's distressing you? Do you feel anxious, scared, like I got to get out of here? Do you move away physically or leave your body to get away? So if you answer resoundingly like, yeah, that's me first, then that's the air type. Okay, the second one is when you're distressed or overwhelmed, do you want to connect? Do you think that something or someone else is the solution to your problem? Does your attention move out and energy move toward another? Are you nice to the others so that they'll like you and help you? Do you agree or compliment or appease people so that they're not upset with you? Do you try to give them what they need even when it's not what you need? So if those are your things that you do first, then that would be water type. All right, the third one, when you're distressed or overwhelmed, do you want to hide? Does your attention and energy pull in and go downward to help you hide or at least hunker down and endure whatever's coming? You might agree on the outside with what someone says, but on the inside, you think you can't make me. <laughs> mm. On the inside, everything starts to feel heavy and stuck. You don't take action. You just endure. And so this is the earth pattern. Fourth, when you're distressed or overwhelmed, do you want to fight? Your attention and energy flow up and out to push against whatever is bothering you. You get big and intimidating and maybe even angry so that you can coerce their compliance to your will. Or maybe you get charming, but your intention is to still control and dominate. You might get bigger and aggressive. And this, of course, is fire. And then when you're distressed or overwhelmed, do you want to do something right away to fix it? Your attention and energy go toward performing correctly, perfectly, your chest and your belly tense to dampen down the flow of life energy. Your attention goes to how well you're performing in a crisis. You get tight and rigid. You feel anxious, but you focus on what's the correct thing to do and do it. Yeah. And of course, that space. Pretty interesting, right? So interesting. What was your one and what were your one and two? One is air. And then I actually saw myself in space quite a bit. Mm. Water has always been my second, but mm. I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm trying to move out of those. So I yeah. saw myself quite a bit in space. <laughs> well, we wanted to find the Right, the uh, useful part of each element in us and mm -hmm. not have the shadow subconsciously or unconsciously operating. Right. Yeah, pulling the strings. Yeah. So learning about these allows us to do that. It's like, oh, I could do with a little earth. Let's do that. But then not becoming resistant to everything and everyone, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. How about you? What did you answer? Air, water, and fire. Air, water, fire. Oh, fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fire for me can be um, charming. It doesn't mm -hmm. get aggressive. It gets more charming. Mm -hmm. I see that. Yeah. All right. Well, we are out of time. So Thank catch you. us on our next episode and we'll go through healing practices for each of these. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, everyone. Until next time, be well.